Hello, welcome to the March 15th Classroom 2.0 Live show. Our topic today is Donors Choose Part 2. And we have many special guests for today's show. The live binder for today is located at this link. And the left hand column has all the tabs for the live binder. The recordings are posted at the Archives and Resources page here at liveclassroom2.0.com slash archive dash and dash resources dot html. And you'll find various recordings there. We always like to find out where in the world people are logging in from. So if you use that second whiteboard tool down or type in the chat, I'm located in central Pennsylvania. I know Peggy's logged in from Phoenix, Arizona. Tammy's in southwest Arkansas. Paula's logging in from New Orleans. I'm not sure where Jenny's logging in from. Long Island, New York. OK. So we've got quite a few East Coast folks today. We usually have an international crowd. And it's always nice to see that we have uh, worldwide attendance to these. Here's our first polling question. Have you ever created a Donors Choose project? This is a yes or no question. And you vote with that icon that's next to the hand underneath your name towards the top of the screen. And once people have voted, I will actually post those responses to the whiteboard. And of those that voted, 42% of people in the room have not. 26% have. The next question, polling question two. Let me clear the first ones first. Have you ever donated to a Donors Choose project? Again, you use the icon next to the hand raise button to the right of that. You can type in the chat, Wes, if, if that's helpful. Most everybody who's going to vote has, so I'll post this. And 50, 50 out of those that voted, 42% have and 42% have not. Polling question three, have you ever had a donor's choose project funded? Again, I'll give people a chance to vote and then publish this to the whiteboard. Again, out of those that replied, 47% have not, 36% have. Again, welcome to our session today, which is Donors Choose Part 2. Welcome to the uh, live show. The show hosts are Peggy George. Lori Moffat, who that's me, and Tammy Moore. Uh, special thanks to Tammy for closed captioning today um, to help those who are hearing impaired or if English is your second language. Um, you can follow the closed captioning by clicking on the CC next to the audio setup wizard on the top. Um, special guests today are Paula Noggle, Rebecca Buckhoff, and Jenny Jones, all from hashtag fourth chat. And I think I'm going to turn this now over to Paula, 
who will introduce herself and the rest of her of the special guests today. Hi, good morning everyone. This is Paula Noggle from um, New Orleans, Louisiana. I'm a fourth grade teacher and I teach math, science, and social studies. Unfortunately, one of our other guests, Rebecca Burkhoff, is not able to be with us this morning uh, due to a family conflict, uh, but um, I will be sharing part of her story with you. So we did want to include her name and information in this because she was definitely an integral part of what we're going to explain today. And um, she's located in California. And then also with us, is Jenny Jones from Bangor, Maine. So I'm going to turn off my mic for a second and just allow Jenny to say hi very quickly. Thanks, Paula. Hi, everybody. Glad to be here with you today. Jenny is um, a very brave soul. She has never done a webinar before, and here she is um, taking the mic and getting ready to share with all of you. So our newbie question for this week is, what is the best way to get started on Donors Choose? I don't know how many of you were in the room were um, part of last week's webinar where we had Laura Candler and Francie Kugelman who stepped us through lots of awesome tips and tricks on how to get started with Donors Choose. And what we're doing today is we are taking what happened with a group of us from fourth fourth chat on Twitter, which meets on Monday nights at 7 Central, and we're going to talk about how we got started and were successful with our Donors Choose projects by giving each other, you know, by um, helping each other, collaborating with each other, encouraging each other, etc. So that's what we're going to be discussing today. How did we take information from Francie and Laura? and turn it into a success story. So that is what we are doing today, part two. So let's get started. OK, this is um, a picture of us. Um, like I said, unfortunately, Rebecca's not with us, but Jenny and I are here. And we're excited to share. And we are going to tell you what happened and, and the process along the way. And what, how we got started was um, during one of our fourth chats, there was a little side chat got going about donors choose. And I put out a tweet and said, oh, maybe we should get together in a Google Hangout over Christmas vacation and talk to each other and encourage each other and share resources with each other. And let's see if we can get a, a few of us to actually get some projects posted on donors choose and see what happens because we were all excited to try it. And I have found that if you tell your personal learning network, your PLN, that you're going to do something, then you're a little bit more responsible, and you feel a little bit more responsible to go ahead and follow through with it, <laughs> because you kind of have to you know, answer to a few more people besides yourself. I know that there's always lots of times when, oh, I want to do this, I want to do that. And you just kind of put it on the back shelf. But once I start talking about it with members of my PLN, they encourage me or they might you know, tweet, hey, how's such and such going? And then I'm going, uh-oh, I need to get working on that. So I learned about Donors Choose quite a few years ago, but you know, kind of one of those things that went on the back burner. Then when I went to my state conference, LeQ, at the beginning of December, I attended a session about donors choose and was reminded about you know hey there's this great crowd uh, funding opportunity out there and I really need to get involved in it so my conference was at the beginning of December and I kept thinking about it and thinking about it and so I said okay I've got to I've got to get you know off the ground and get it started so during our fourth chat topic on December the 18th, our topic was reorganizing recharge over the holidays. And I sent out the tweet, it was one of the questions, asking if any of the people in Fort Chat would be thinking about writing a grant or applying for awards over the holidays. And this is kind of a screenshot of the tweet. And then this is what happened as a follow-up to that tweet. 
there were several people in the chat who said, oh yeah, they would be interested in, you know, talking about it more. And one of the things that we use to collaborate with is Google Hangout. Now, I don't know if you've ever used a Google Hangout, but what Google Hangout allows you to do is to have up to 10 people in the room doing a video conference at one time. And it is free and it is an awesome tool to have in your toolbox. So we decided through our tweets that yes, we were going to do this. So I said, okay, I'm going to pick a date and let's get started and see what happens. So to make sure that I didn't forget during the chat, I went ahead and I said, Okay, I'm going to add it to my Google Calendar and have reminders sent to me through either email or pop-ups so that I remember. So we went ahead and scheduled our Google Hangout for um, December 30th when we were all on our, our um, winter break. And since I had the reminder in there, I knew I wouldn't forget. So on the uh, day of, right, right before that, I sent out um, DMs, Twitter direct messages to the people who had said that they were interested and said, hey, I'm not sure I have you in my Google circles, which is a kind of quick and easy way to invite people into Google Hangouts. But I said, if you give me your um, email address, I can make sure that I get you involved in the Hangout properly. So of course, everybody sent me back their um, email uh, information. And then on the morning of the 20th, 30th, I was able to include them into the Google Hangout. So another thing that I did that would help us kind of keep on track and share resources was I created a Google Doc that we would use um, during the Google Hangout and also after the Google Hangout. And what is nice about um, having a Google Doc is that you can actually share it um, while you're in the Hangout and you can actually pull it up and um, show it on your screen as you're working on it. So that's always a fun um, integration to have going on during the Hangout. So what we did was I just kind of, I was going over the resources that I had used to find out more about Donors Choose and the tips and tricks that I had learned from Francie's awesome webinar that she and Laura Canva had done I believe it was a couple of years ago. Now, I'm not talking about the one they did last week for Classroom 2.0 Live, but the, the first one that they did that I saw, and that's what it spurred us to invite them on last week. So anyhow, through using the doc, Jenny and I and Rebecca were able to um, incur keep encouraging each other. There were five of us in the Hangout, but one person was um, going through a change of school possibly, and wasn't quite ready to do it. And then my, my good buddy Jan Wells from Kansas uh, was not at a point in time where she actually wanted to participate fully in it, although she did enjoy learning about the tips and tricks for donors choose. And she said she has filed it away for a later date. But she had too much on her plate at that particular time. So Jenny and Rebecca and I were the ones that actually followed through on it. And I had to laugh at myself because um, the afternoon of December 30th, Jenny tweeted out that she had her first project. She had posted her first project to Donors Choose. And I thought, oh, it'll take a couple of days because, you know, it's Christmas holidays, New Year's Eve, et cetera. So it won't get posted for a couple of days. And I thought, hmm, I'm not going to let this little youngster, you know, beat me to the punch. So I hurried up and got mine done on the 30th also and, and sent it to Donors Choose. And again, what they do is they have teacher readers who read over your proposal. And then if needed, they send you follow-up questions. And I don't think either Jenny or I needed follow-up questions, but um, we got them posted. They got posted on January the 1st, and we were both like, holy moly, this is happening so quickly. Yes, I am very competitive. <laughs> so, but that was great because, you know, Jenny, she had some difficulties, which I'm going to let her talk about, getting hers posted. So I learned some information through the Google Doc about in Twitter about some difficulties she was having. So I was learning as she was going through the steps. But yes, 
that spurring on of each other was an awesome way to get us going. So what ended up happening was, you know, we both, Jenny and I both had our projects up. So what you do is you submit them, they get reviewed, and then if everything is, um, you know, acceptable to donors choose, they post them for you. And so we got them posted and we were, you know, sending out tweets back and forth saying, hey, look what's going on. This is exciting. It's happening. And it, we were off and running. So one of the things that you need to do as you are um, thinking about putting up your project, and Donors Choose really is awesome about stepping you through this process. They send you emails with the next step and they give you tips on how to have successful projects. And one of the biggest ones we learned from Francie and Laura, I wanted Chromebooks. And I, had I not gone through their webinar and their slides, I would have put a whole bunch of uh, Chromebooks on one Donors Choose project and then might have been a little disappointed when it didn't get funded because of the amount of money. So Francie strongly suggested that when you start posting projects on Donors Choose, you keep the amount to right around $400 if possible because those are the, that just seems to be the peak amount that people, you know, that get funded very quickly. And I said, well, you know, I want to do more than one Chromebook, so how do I do that? So it really ends up being kind of easy because you do, you know, mine was um, collaborating with Chromebooks with fourth graders, part one. My second one was the same title, part two. My third one was the same title, part three. And actually, I didn't even tweak my proposals. I just changed the title on them and submitted them. So I had three proposals up in a very short period of time. And then you are encouraged to have um, your tweets ready, your emails ready to be sent out to people in your personal learning network. So I had all that ready to go because if you do so in the first seven days that your proposal is up and you send out tweets or emails and you let your friends and family know that if they donate, any amount they donate can be doubled in the first seven days if they use um, a code that is given to you. At the particular time I was doing it, Disney was the code that was used for the matching funds. At this particular time, I believe it's the word inspire. But it doesn't matter. Whatever it is, Donors Choose will let you know what that particular code word is. So you include that in all your correspondence with people that you think might like to donate to you. And of course, having a huge Twitter audience is helpful because I tweeted it out and got quite a few people to donate that way. And then of course, just like any um, good person would do, thanking your donors is very important. You get emails every time someone has added a donation and it is very, it would behoove you to go onto your donors choose page and send them a quick thank you. Now thank you letters are sometimes requested by donors and that again is a step when everything gets funded you do that at the end of your um, funding process, you have so long to get your thank you package in the mail. And I would suggest, unless you're really, really good about that, giving yourself some extra time. I was a little slow in getting mine out, but I definitely beat my deadline of when I said I would get them out because you have to include pictures of the students using whatever it is you asked for in your project. And sometimes that takes a while, you know, to actually get it going and using it properly and, you know, getting the kids to write the thank you notes and stuff takes some time because we are all crazy busy in our classrooms. So when you are asked the date that you will complete your thank you packet, you might want to take as much time as they'll allow you to do so because when you complete that, you are earning points in the Donors Choose uh, program. And when you have points, then you are able to put up other projects. And when you have gathered more points, then you can ask for special projects like um, 
getting a bus for a field trip and some um, using getting things from vendors that are not automatically a part of the donors choose family. So getting your things out is very important. All your thank yous out is very important so that you are increasing your points within the donors choose community. Okay, so I'm going to explain my success story. Then I will share, um, I think, Rebecca's next and then Jenny. So uh, what I have done is since our Google Hangout on December 30th, I have had three projects funded. So I have now the proud owner, and my students are the proud owners, of three new Acer Chromebooks. Since then, I've posted two more uh, Chromebook projects. I'm looking for number four and number five. Um, I found out about um, Laura and Francie's Caring Classrooms page on Facebook, and I was lucky enough that um, when you go through the steps, which is all explained on their Facebook page, on um, what they call Sun, Fun Day Sunday, she will sometimes add your project to their community page, and um, if it's you know very close to being funded, and my third one was, and Laura very graciously put it on her Facebook page, and it got funded that very Sunday afternoon. So that was exciting. Okay, so, I'm sorry, not advancing. Oh, there we go. So here are some pictures. There's um, my students with the arrival of our Chromebook. My first Chromebook came into our classroom on January the 9th. So you can see this process took place very quickly. There's a picture of us unboxing it, a picture of it open, and some pictures of us with our students using it. The one over here on the top right is a cute little story. Um, I ran an after-school computer club for my students, and one of my students did a scratch program with a piano. Um, she had actually kind of borrowed it from another person on Scratch, and she did a remix of it. So this, what's going on is we did a BYOD, Bring Your Own Device, day in my classroom uh, a couple of weeks ago, and anyone who had done well on a particular um, test that we had done was allowed to spend some time on their own device doing anything they wanted to do. So the one girl who had made the piano program shared it with this student who is on the Chromebook, and she was so excited to be learning how to play the piano. And it was so cute to watch. And I thought that was just an awesome story and great you know, use of how they are being used in my classroom. OK. Jenny, I'm going to turn the mic over to you so you can talk about what you've learned about Donors Choose, and then I'll take it back to go over Rebecca's. Thanks. OK, thanks, Paula. Um, my project was for a listening station. And so I had requested a set of headphones and a jack so that all the headphones could plug into that. Uh, our working with Paula was my biggest motivator. Uh, we kind of worked through the buddy system. And so that made it a little easier. And any challenges I was going through, I kind of knew that maybe Paula or Rebecca were going through the same thing. And also it was somebody, other people to bounce ideas off from. Uh, my project got funded in two days. We, I used social media pretty heavily, Facebook and Twitter. And um, I talked a lot with the kids about that too and explained that people were donating to them who had no idea who they were and who had sort of no idea who I was either, people who I had only met online but had talked a lot with. Um, Thanking the donors is very important, and I made sure to do that as people donated. I would go on the Donors Choose website and thank, leave a note to thank them. I also thank them through Facebook or Twitter, depending on where I had connections with them. Um, so not only was it a place to publicly thank people, but also kind of challenged other followers and Facebook friends to donate to us as well. It was nice, a nice publicity opportunity for us. Like Paula said, the thank you package was, um, a, I'm glad I set my thank you date um, a little ahead because that was challenging finding time for everybody. Um, some donors will choose 
to have um, your students write letters and send them to them, and others will not. I had all of my students make posters, though. So even though all the donors didn't want letters, I had them make posters so that I could take a picture and at least send the picture or deliver the posters personally. Um, one of my challenges was that my projects got lost twice. So um, at first I was using Safari to work on my project. And I spent that morning that Paula described, the, the 30th, the same morning that we had, uh, the day that we had talked about it in Google Hangouts. And so I'd spent a few hours working on my proposal only to have it lost. And I think I even ran it a little bit in our Google Doc. I know that was supposed to be resources, but I kind of use it as a place to vent my frustration. But um, I actually got it to work OK in Chrome and had kind of given Paula a heads up about that. Um, and so we had it funded, like I said, in two days. And I think it was mailed to us in about a week or maybe even less. It was, we, I worked on the proposal on the 30th. And then it was in our classroom on the Friday that we got back from Christmas break. So. Um, yeah, it was a great first experience. And I haven't put up another project yet. We're a very small class. We have a class of 13 in a pretty small community. So I'm thinking that I don't want to tap all of our friends and family for money right now. I'm trying to think of a, a very worthwhile project before I put it up again. So um, that's my story. I'm turning it back to Paula. Thank you, Jenny. That was awesome. Um, yes, I loved your pictures on your Donors Choose page, and the kids are looking so engaged. And I, it, even though you have a small class, isn't it nice that we were able to reach out through social media and not have to pull that money out of our own pockets like so many teachers do? All right, let me go on to share Rebecca's story. Um, Rebecca was part of our um, chat that night and also part of our Google Hangout. And um, she took an extra couple of days. I think she has a, a big family, so her holidays were very busy with um, you know, family and friends. So she, she was a little bit slower than Jenny and I were getting things up, but she got it up and she was funded within the uh, first three days that her project was up. In fact, um, each one of us donated a small portion to each other's page just to kind of get it kick-started. And I went to Rebecca's page to make my first donation. And by the time I got her tweet and I got back you know, on, online and I went to her page, her first one was already fully funded, so I couldn't even donate to her first one. Rebecca was very fortunate in that hers were also for Chromebooks. And she lived in a state in California where there were matching funds. She was funded, 50% of her project was funded automatically through Wells Fargo. And that is something that you need to learn when you're on the Donors Choose page. There, if you go to the bottom of the page, there's a, an area called Partner Funding. And you want to click on that, which opens up a page that has all of the state abbreviations. And you want to click on your state's abbreviation, and it opens up the page. And it shows you who, at that particular time, is um, a partner donor. And you can get some advice there on you know, maybe getting some matching funds right off the bat. So Rebecca was, like I said, fortunate enough that in California, Wells Fargo was offering 50% funding right off the bat. So hers, she was excited to get hers done. And she also did a second one. And what her success story is, following all of the donors choose things, she and I had also done the Hour of Code back in early December, run through um, code.org. And it was an online thing where your kids could get online no matter what grade level they are in and spend time learning a little bit about coding. And it was a step-by-step -step process that the kids did. It was put together. They had videos from people like um, Bill Gates and um, Mark Zuckerberg 
on their site and they were stepping the kids through the very basics of learning to code. Well, what they did as a follow-up to that is if you could sponsor a coding class um, at your school and could get, uh, I think it was 15 students to complete 20 hours of coding um, and get all the certificates that were available that they would um, that you would be in the running for a thousand dollars of donors choose gift cards. Well, Rebecca did that, and she stepped her kids through the program that was put on Code.org. And unfortunately, um, part of the requirements were that you had to have at least eight of the children in your group had to be girls because the big push for this coding was that they wanted more girls to get involved in computer science and coding. So of the 15, they wanted the majority to be girls, and Rebecca was kind of hamstrung because she only has eight girls in her classroom. So she received $750 coding from um, code.org in donors choose gift cards and she has one other girl who is not quite through the program but she has been promised that if that last girl in her class finishes it within I guess she's got a certain time frame that she will get the full one thousand dollars of um, um, gift carding isn't that an awesome way and those are things that happen a lot on donors choose so one of the things that I suggest, one of the tips that I suggest is that you follow the Donors Choose blog, you get on the Facebook pages, you pay attention to tweets that are set out through Donors Choose, you probably follow Laura Candler and Francie Kugelman and you know they're going to put out lots of tips and tricks and let you know when exciting things are coming along that would enable you to maybe more quickly get your project funded. Okay, so here's a quick recap of our fourth chat success story. We had a, dis a discussion on our weekly chat. We did a Google Hangout on the 30th. Jenny made me get off my butt and make sure that I got my first proposal sent in to um, Donors Choose that very day. Jenny and I had projects that were posted on the Donors Choose website on the 1st of January. Rebecca's was posted on the 3rd. Um, I'm sorry, she was submitted on the 3rd and was posted on the 4th. Uh, Jenny and I had our first projects fully funded within a 24-hour period, and Rebecca had hers fully funded within a three-day period. And my first Chromebook arrived in my classroom on January 9th, and Jenny received her learning station on January 10th. So if you think it can't happen, look what happened in less than a two-week period to the three of us. It was exciting. It was a rewarding experience to work together, to collaborate, to encourage each other. And I would strongly suggest that if you want to do that, get some people together and do the same thing. Follow these steps and you'll be amazed at how easy you can get your projects funded also. And just a recap to show you what's happened. This is the amount of money that has been um, awarded to the three of us. Plus there's a couple of extra little goodies that came my way through a gift, uh, couple of gift cards one from a friend and one from something else I'm going to explain in a moment. And then, of course, Rebecca got $750 in gift cards from um, code.org. So um, you can see that it just seems to keep growing and growing, and we absolutely love that. All right, so uh, again, some tips are to keep your projects under $400. If you don't know, when you submit a project, you go shopping. Of course, the shopping is the fun part. Who doesn't like to go shopping? But you have to keep in mind that there are extra charges that are added on top 
that have to be covered because of you know donors choose has some <clears throat> things that they need to pay for from their end. So even though a Chromebook might be like about two hundred and seventy dollars, it quickly adds up to very close to four hundred dollars by the time you actually get it posted and everything's on there. If you want to get more than one a device or something big, you can do a part one, part two, etc. to get um, other projects, and that way they're you know you keep the amount small, but you get as many devices as you need. You would definitely want to use um, your social media contacts to help you and um, check your state partner funding. Also, um, I didn't put it up here, but don't forget, within the first seven days of your project going live, there's usually some kind of a code that your friends and family can use during checkout, which will double their donation. So even if they give a dollar, it turns into two. If they give five dollars, it turns into ten. If they give twenty dollars, you're up to forty very quickly. So don't forget to do that. So the first seven days, be ready. Have your email ready to send, your email letter. Have your tweets ready to send out. And you know, work hard those first seven days, and it can happen. Okay. As I was preparing for this today. I um, received an email from Colleen King of Math Playground. I don't know how many of you attended the webinar that Colleen did. Uh, I don't remember when it was. Peggy, I'm sure, can drop the link to that archive for us. But she wanted me to, she said that she had received an email saying that I was doing this presentation this morning and that she wanted to let me know that she has. Um, a caring page that she helps sponsor projects on donors choose through math playground and she did it last year and she is going to do it of course it's closed at this particular moment but she is going to do it again this year so those of you who um, maybe aren't going to do any um, project writing until the summertime please make sure that you um, think about you know, going to her Facebook page, into her giving page, and trying to get yours added. She will um, put it on her page in August and September and help you with funding. I think last year she helped raise over $24,000 by doing that. So that's some breaking news that you need to know about. Also, I don't think, yes, did I put it on here? Yes, I did. Um, one of the gift cards I mentioned as I was getting ready for this webinar, I was on the Donors Choose blog, and there was a, a blog post about a special offer that's going on right now from the author of the book Thrive. And she is offering a $29 gift card to Donors Choose if you advance order her book. And even if you buy the Kindle version, which I did, which I believe I paid maybe $11 for the Kindle version, which comes out on um, March the 29th. She will give you the full $29 gift card. So yes, you're buying the book from her, but you're actually getting your money back because she's giving you a Donors Choose gift card to apply to whatever project you want, whether it be your own or a friend's or some teacher in your district or somebody that you just want to reach out and make their day special. So that's an awesome thing. I um, have included, of course, Laura's wonderful resource page, Francie's slide deck, which is really what got us going and really helped us um, be so successful. And then a blog post that I found that gave, gives some um, eight tips also that are really great to follow and easy to, you know, follow along and, and get your projects done. So that is it. I know it didn't take quite as long as usual, but I'm hoping that there are some questions that we can answer. And I know that I would love to hear from anybody in the audience who can add, who could take the mic and maybe add to our gathered knowledge in this room. Thanks. I'm going to turn it over to Lori to see if she got any questions because I wasn't paying too much attention to the chat. 
Thank you so much, Paula. I did collect a couple questions as they were going by, but they've been answered already, although a recurring one did come up. It seems like there's confusion about the thank yous as far as who gets what type of thank you, whether it's the thank yous, students of yours right, and, and how many. Okay, that is a little confusing. What happens is on your Donors Choose page, every time someone donates to your project, I guess unless they do it anonymously, but even then it says anonymous, um, it posts at the bottom of your project page. And on that page, you can reply to them right there on the page, and they get sent an email saying that, you know, Paula Noggle or Jenny Jones or whomever has sent you a thank you on the Donors Choose page. Now that's just thanking your donors as it's happening. Mm -hmm. okay? But at the end of your project, when your project is fully funded, as people were making donations to your project, sometimes they, there's a, a part that they fill out that says, do you request personal thank yous from this class? And the person mm -hmm. that's making the donation can say yes or no. And so when your project is fully funded, you receive the information about which donors want to receive personalized thank yous from your classroom. So you are asked to send at least five individual thank yous to those particular donors. And you don't, if you, of course, don't know how to send them to the donors, you send them to Donors Choose, and Donors Choose takes care of sending them out to the people that requested them. So I hope that clarifies that. You are also requested, whether anyone asks for personalized thank yous or not, you are responsible to post six pictures to Donors Choose to be added to your project page when your project has been funded. Thanks, Paula. Uh, Jenny also wanted to add something. So yes, Jenny, you may. And I'll ask the other couple questions then after you've added to that about thank yous. Thanks, Lily. I just wanted to say that even though one of my only one of my donors had requested letters. I had, like I said, I had all of my students make some kind of poster or a thank you drawing to give to the donors. And maybe that was a little bit selfish, but I was thinking that in the future if I was going to post another project that people would be more likely to fund it and contribute to it if they knew how appreciative we were for their donation for the first project. Sure, thank you. I did capture a couple of other other questions. One was, what different policies do districts have about teachers using Donors Choose? Any advice about working these projects in large districts? Uh, one of the things you're asked at, as you're completing your um, Donors Choose um, profile, I guess it's called, is whether your administrator is aware of the fact that you will be doing this. Mm -hmm. So it does, you know, it does need to um, be go through your front office at least. Um, as far as uh, I'm not quite sure what they mean by large districts. It's a personal thing for your classroom. Although I know Francie said last week that a teacher could post a project that wasn't specifically for their own classroom. And maybe Francie will take the mic and tell us a little bit more about that uh, in a couple of minutes, if that would be OK. She's a, she's a much better expert at that than I am. I just <laughs> wanted to add on to Jenny's comment. Uh, I saw somebody say something about, could I send um, information to my donors anyhow, if, even if they didn't request it. Um, you do not have your donors um, information unless mm -hmm. you know them personally. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it's your friends and family, yes, you probably have their email. But there were a lot of donors who donated to my projects that I don't know personally, so I don't have any contact information for them. So my only way to thank them was through my donors choose page because they didn't necessarily request uh, personalized thank yous. In fact, of my three projects, 
My first project had one person who requested um, the personalized thank yous. My second project had one person that requested personalized thank yous. And my third project had no one who requested uh, personalized projects. But I made sure that I thanked every donor as they were donating to the project mm -hmm. on my Donors Choose page. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've got a couple more questions here. Uh, this person teaches a high school art and has a limited budget. I asked my students, what is one material or tool you have always wanted to use? The teacher has a list, and they've been writing projects based on what they'd like to use. They've, she's had six funded so far. Um, this same person hasn't sent anything home to parents. Have you done that? Have you sent information about this home to parents, and do you get a, a good response that way? Uh, yes, one of the things you need to do um, is to have a release letter from your parents for the pictures that mm -hmm. you're going to post. So I made sure that all my parents knew what I was going to do. And I live in a um, high poverty, um, I teach in a high poverty school district. So I didn't really expect too many of my parents to um, participate in the actual donation to our projects, mm -hmm. although I did get one parent who did. But um, it wasn't about you know re asking them to make donations. It was about letting them know that this was going on, that their children might be part of the picture that was you know going to be posted. I mean, we have release forms in our district anyhow, but Donors Choose likes to have their own, and you don't send them to Donors Choose. You just keep them on file so that you have everything covered mm -hmm. and that, you know for safety. And if you can't, if you get into a situation where you work in a district where I know this happens sometimes, where you cannot use your children's faces um, on something that goes on a public website, well, you can still get around that because you can take pictures from the back side of the children using whatever the material is that you received, and it doesn't show their faces. So there are ways around that also. Oh, and I certainly hope Francie will take the mic. I think Francie actually logged out of the classroom. Yeah, Francie left. So she won't be able to contribute. Those are all the questions that I was able to capture. Does someone else in the room like, would somebody like to get on the mic and, and tell us your experience? You can raise your hand if you want to do that. and we can let you get on the microphone. One of the things I would like to know, and if they aren't comfortable taking the mic, they could just type in the chat room. After listening to this today, I was wondering how many people have thought of some project that they would like to try to get funded, and if they wouldn't mind um, you know, dropping it in the, you know, their idea in the chat room, and if they want to, you know, drop their Twitter name, handle, or whatever, you know, and let's make a little connection and see who we can get help through today's webinar. And somebody asked what small projects are good for preschools that have a chance to get funded. I know one of the things that um, some of my friends that teach the little ones have asked for are those nice rugs that have like the letters of the alphabet or maybe a state map on it or different types of furnishing, furniture. Uh, one person that I don't know personally, but she happened to donate to my project, so I went onto her page and was looking at it. And um, she needed um, cubby holes or like kind of like locker areas for her special needs students, and she got that funded. Listening um, center devices, books, art project, you know, things that you need for art projects. Uh, there are even people that have asked for um, money for candy for um, incentives and things like that. So there's lots and lots of variety. There were a couple questions that were answered in chat that are probably worth answering in the recording. 
how does someone become a donors choose volunteer was one. Are you talking about the, the people who review the I um, think so. Okay. I think um, so. What I learned last week is that after you have be um yeah, after you've been part of the donors choose community for a while and you have been very successful with posting and getting your projects funded that they will reach out to you. I don't believe that you can request it. Mm -hmm. I believe it comes from donors choose. Like Francie Kugelman who's had like I forgot how much money um funded through donors choose. She is a um reviewer. Mhm. Mm okay. Um what about if teachers uh leave the school where they are in and they have uh received donors choose equipment of some sort, what happens to the equipment? Okay, that's an awesome question I meant to talk about and I forgot. What the agreement is um, with donors choose is that the equipment is the teacher and the schools. And if you would leave the school, you have to work out an, uh, an arrangement with your principal. If the principals, are, I mean if it's something small, I guess, you could ask to take it with you. If it's something very large, um, you know, it would probably need to stay behind with the school. But you need to kind of have that arrangement worked out ahead of time with your administration. But yes, you are able to take things with you. And from what I understand from last week, it sounds like now you're even, they've changed it recently. So I'm not really 100% sure how it mm -hmm. works. I don't plan on leaving my building. so. I'm not the best one to ask that of because I didn't even think about it as it was starting my project. But maybe we can get an answer for, for them. That's a better answer. I have another question. This person does projects in math class that need devices and it's hard to get one or two devices for use in the class in the school itself like a, an iTouch or a tablet. Is something like that a possibility to be funded? Yes, definitely, and break it up into parts. Do uh, you know? Come up with a catchy title. Do your make sure your um, intro statement explains why you need this for your students. Mine um, dealt with the fact that I, I'm in a high poverty school and that my students are as eager as any other student to be using devices and. Um, you know, you, you want to make it as engaging for people when they land on your page to look at it and say, yeah, I'd really like to donate to this. So when you're looking for devices, definitely do it as part one and then part two and then part three for however many devices you're looking for. So that's a great way because it keeps the, the project small, which tend to get funded faster. I'm not saying that large projects don't get funded because they do. But I might have been sitting around waiting for a month or more to get $1,200 in one project where I got my first Chromebook in my classroom on January the 9th mm -hmm. after having the project posted on January the 1st. And then my other two Chromebooks came in a week after that and then a week after that. So, you know, breaking it down does help. Sure. Thank you so much. I think. Those were the questions I, I saw. So we'll continue with the closing. Upcoming shows for the next few Saturdays are these. March 22nd, next Saturday, Aaron Klein is our featured teacher. Then March 29th, Lucid Chart with Brad Hanks. Uh, Lucid Chart's a diagram collaboration tool. April 5th is to be determined. April 12th, Donna Roman will be the featured teacher. And then the 19th and the 26th are not going to be show days. First for Easter weekend and the second for the Den Spring Virtual Conference. This slide is for Steve Hargadon's newest project, the Learning Revolution Project. He has gathered together all of his resources on one page. And um, you can see here all the upcoming events that, that he is spearheading. Um, one good thing about this 
uh, now the um, host your own webinar has come back. And you can find out how to do that on the Learning Revolution Project page. You can host your own webinar in a Blackboard Collaborate room as long as you make it available to the public. Yes, chat does get archived. It, it's going to be on one of the things we I'm going to talk about in, in the close. Chat gets archived. Everything gets archived. Uh, you can nominate a featured teacher. We've got two featured teachers scheduled very soon. And you can even nominate yourself if you want to. The direct link to the form is this one. And Peggy has posted that in chat, tinyurl.com slash cr20live featured teacher nominate without the E at the end. When you exit the room, the Classroom 2.0 Live survey form should open. Or you can take the link inside the chat that Peggy has just placed. Or the third way to get the survey is to find it in the Live Binder. It will always be in the Live Binder. Sometimes when you exit the room, the survey does not appear in your browser, but usually it does. One of the things you can do with the survey is request a professional development certificate. You can also use this. Well, this is the link for the, the survey. At the bottom of the survey is the request for the PD certificate. Please use a personal email for this if you do so. Uh, this message tends to get blocked by school emails. It's also in every single live binder. You can request it there as well. Uh, even for recording, when you watch a recording. Speaking of, they are all available on the archives page, which I've mentioned, but they're also available at live, uh, CR20 Live, iTunes U. The video collection is there as well as the audio collection. So those are other ways to get to recordings. And this is what I was thinking of when I thought about yet another place for the archives. The RSS feed is a place to get the links to show archives. So on the Weebly page for Classroom 2.0 Live, you can um, get a, go to the list of show archives or get it in a feed reader here. So special thanks again to our special guests today, Paula Noggle, Jenny Jones. I will mentioned Rebecca Buckoff uh, as well. Special thanks to Steve Hargadon, who's the founder of Classroom 2.0, Teacher 2.0, Future of Education, and the Learning Revolution, to Weebly.com for providing our website, and to everyone who participated in the, in the show. And all those links for the recording, the chat log, the live binder, they'll all be posted later. That is, more links into the live binder will be posted later today. Thank you all for coming. Bye-bye.